Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So today is another freezing cold day in Montreal, and it's very windy too. But I still decided to come out to enjoy a little life in the cafe. I'm around Sherbrooke Metro Station today, and I'm outside Cafe Origin around the corner of the street. Here I'm going in. It looks really fancy in there. It's not too busy in here, and the interior walls are full of really pretty floral murals. And as always, I sketch my pastry and cup of latte before the interior sketch. And before I started doing the interior sketch, I'm gonna enjoy my latte and look at all these beautiful flowers on the wall. There are also a couple of birds in the fantasy world. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you some of the pages from my current watercolor sketchbook. So this is a Speedball brand handbook watercolor journal, a 140 pound watercolor paper. And I've been working on it for about a month now. These are the pages from my trip to Ottawa on a weekend and um, some more urban sketches. I've shared most of these sketchbook pages um, here on YouTube and also with my Sunday sketch class. All right, so now I'm ready to sketch the interior in front of me. I'm feeling very inspired and ambitious today. So I'm gonna do a double page panorama. So I'd like to take a minute or two to visualize the things I wanna include, including the people. So for most cafe sketches, I'd like to start drawing the people because they're always in the front covering tables or counter areas. So I'm beginning to draw this girl who is pretty stable, sitting here working on her laptop. That's her two elbows. This is the back view and the um, corner of her laptop. And just drawing the stool underneath her and finishing the thickness of the, uh, the table. And now I'm connecting um, the windows in front of her. So these windows are about the same height as her, um, most of her body sitting on the stool. So this is how I figure out proportion. I always uh, compare it with the thing that I already drew. And then these uh, window panels have come easier because they're much smaller. And now I'm beginning to draw the cylinder shape of the flower pot that we can see the bottom of it and the leafy greens draping down from the pot. The drawing pretty quickly because I'm not worry about counting those leaves and get every single veins or leaves in. So try to get the overall form of the foliages. It's kind of like a type of fern. And then behind the flower pot, there's one more large window panel. And in front of it, there's another flower pot on the table. So when I'm doing urban sketches, I always like to uh, start uh, drawing the essence of this place. So I kind of like to finish the, uh, the window panels, but without too much window frame details. And then these uh, flower pots with the leafy greens in there are really attractive organic forms that I always enjoy sketching. And then there is a wall in the middle here another small plant pot. A vertical line that divides this wall to another window area. And now I am drawing another girl chatting with her friend on the right hand side. Again, this is the back view. I just found it's pretty easy to start back view of people. Focus on their hair shape and then the side view of her face. She had a ponytail and interesting hand gesture. She's wearing a really loose hoodie. And then this girl in the foreground, pretty close to me, her face is bigger because she's closer. And um, she's pretty happy talking on the phone. Just focus on seeing these lines that define the movement and energy of this person. So for me, I believe that lines have the power to define movement, spirit, 
and um, sometimes even emotions. Okay, so uh, when I'm drawing lines, I'm also expressing um, the happy mood of myself and the people that I observe as well. And I love sketching in cafes because people in here, uh, most of them are very relaxed and happy, happily chatting with their friends or family members. So it's a really uh, nice and inviting place, an inspiring place as always for me. And I, I'm sure it's going to be for you too. And the people in here, they could stay in the same spot for hours. So a lot of people came before me, and when I finished my sketch and ready to go, um, a lot of them actually sometimes are still here. So in the modern world, most people are always say busy, busy about their life and work. And um, for me, one of the things I love being in cafes is that uh, there's a sense of peace in here as people stay here for a long period of time and happily enjoying their food and drinks and their chats. So now I am drawing this uh, plant in the foreground in front of these window panels. And uh, before that, there are the left gaps in between these window panels. So to avoid as much overlapping lines as possible. And now I'm going into the details to draw the inner window frames for each panel. Yeah, a lot of repeating lines wrapping around these frames. There's so many layers of depths. So basically these window panels are uh, very thin slabs of prism carved out from the surface of the wall. And adding another little plant here. Some of the plants in here are actually fake, um, but the other ones are real. Very interesting and drawing the cord of this girl's laptop, paying attention to all these little details in here. And there's another uh, layer of frame for these windows. It takes a bit of patience to draw these layers of lines wrapping around. And now just drawing this uh, little lamp or something hanging from the ceiling and this vertical line that separates uh, two walls actually and then drawing the main entrance this arc shape on top of the door frame yeah and um, dr just writing the letters the back view of the name of this cafe really fun to do and um, more little shapes that I see inside the door frame. It's actually pretty fun to draw. Just a bunch of geometric shapes in different sizes, mostly rectangles. So as you can see, I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm drawing very quickly and loosely in all of these small window panels. They are actually the same size um, in real life, but I'm actually making them looking a little different from one another. So the imperfection from the human hand is actually making things more lively. And all right, just kind of going back to the middle area of this sketch, add a couple more foliages. Now I'm starting to draw the imagery on the mural, starting with this uh, fantasy bird. I think it's a parrot or, or um, actually a baby eagle. And it's really cute. And then drawing these leaves around the bird. Leaves and veins. And twisting shapes. Okay, and then moving on to this wall on the, uh, on the right hand side of my sketch. Some more house plants dangling from the ceiling area. And the window panels behind. So when I'm sketching, I'm always recognizing the objects that's in the front first and I always draw the things in the front first and then the shape behind it. And this technique is to avoid as many overlapping lines as possible. And it's okay if we sometimes have overlapping lines because we can't control or uh, predict uh, or measure everything perfectly. Sometimes overlapping lines is fine, so don't be too hard on yourself. And I just drew my little residue 
of the pastry on the plate and my little cup in the foreground and some more details for the mural on the bottom of the table. Mostly leafy and flower petal shapes. Yeah, so I think this cafe is really unique. Um, I've never been to a cafe yet with so much murals on the interior walls. And this one is just, a, you know, stand out from all the other cafes that I've ever been to. So if you're visiting Montreal, yeah, you can come visit this cafe. Their coffee and pastry items are pretty good. And the atmosphere, the vibe in here is really refreshing, inspiring for you. Adding some more accentuations as I go. There's a, a wire here connecting the lamps or something else. Right, and um, this is around the last part of the drawing process. So just adding last bit of imagery for the mural on the right hand side. And now I switch to another different fine liner pen. It's a dark sepia Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen. I'm beginning to draw this person waiting for the light to change outside on the corner of the street and the street far away on the other side with very simple squares to show the windows keeping the details outside the windows of the cafe very minimal but still interesting uh, drawing these poles outside the window and the contour outline of the building on the other side of the street yeah, the details are actually very abstract. Windows and uh, fill the windows with dark ink lines to give it a better definition. Yeah, so these buildings up there are very old. Probably like over 100 years old. The windows and balcony areas. Yeah, and the details out there is very abstract. Adding a couple, couple of these um, tiles, mini tiles around the entrance, just to make that part look very interesting. And here's the look of my finished line work. And it took me about uh, 45 minutes to draw because it's a full page panorama. There are a lot of relationships to figure out. And now I'm ready to add watercolors. So I'm going to have a lot of fun mixing and putting on layers of different shades of green. Yeah, so most of this area is covered by the mural. But first of all, I want to finish the color with a very simple muted color outside the window. The leftover brown, mix it with a little bit blue to paint these heritage buildings outside. And a little bit leftover gray that I mix with blue and a bit of royal purple just to keep the view outside very simple with just one flat town. I'm gonna to put most of my effort painting the interior space, just wetting the, uh, the wall area and the table with a mix of um, orange and the yellow ochre, wet into wet, a bit of burnt sienna to create this really fun uh, blooming effect of two colors. Use the same color to paint that corner building out there and the leftover gray for the street wetting the wall areas with clear water and punching on the mix of lime green and a bit of um, yellow ochre. So overall, this is a light green town, but actually every brushstroke is slightly different of a different shade of green because the wall is being affected by the, by the lights around the ceiling area and also from the daylight outside the window. And so those light sources are affecting the tone of the green on the wall. So it's not a flat kind of green. So I'm constantly mixing more or less yellow ochre into the lime green. So as you can see, it's a really nice blend of at least two different shades of greens together. Not a flat and even wash. And also controlling the amount of water in the paint as well. The water in watercolors is very important to control the intensity and also the contrast in the painting. 
and I just use a bit of leftover gray that I mix with blue and the magenta to paint uh, the old window frames in the middle. And also for the view outside, it's pretty gray. It's an overcast winter day just to get the cold winter atmosphere in with a simple muted gray and using viridian green mixed with yellow ochre to paint these leafy greens. This is a pretty different tone from the wall. The color of the wall is a bit artificial, but these greens of the leafy plants are of a more organic shade of green with viridian green or sap green mixed with a bit of yellow ochre. Just so they're not merging together with the mural. And keep playing with more shades of green for the imageries on the mural. So basically, I am grabbing Viridian Green, Peacock Green, mixed with a bit of Burnt Sienna to get a darker shade. So this is a really great practice for myself, or if you're trying something similar, to um, practice mixing different tones of greens and adding a bit darker spots here and there of blue. There's a bit of blues here and there. Blue and greens together, they are actually colors in harmony. Um, now, so I'm adding a bit of warm color now. It's very important. So this mural is so well designed and painted because there's a bit of warm colors in the middle of these fantasy animals, this baby eagle with red and oranges and this uh, pink lotus flower and more shades of greens. And painting these terracotta colors of the flower pots with burnt sienna and slight bit of red. Quickly painting the table with two layers of yellow brown. The second layer is, is darker, containing less water to give it a bit contrast. The edge of the table closer to the table is brighter because of daylight. And painting, quickly painting my coffee cup and using bits of grays to paint uh, the little shapes that I see around. And a bit of shade around the higher part of the window frame there. Bits of blue, bluish grays around the bottom of the table. Some muted green that I mix with uh, burnt sienna into viridian green to get these shade colors and also some more veins and leaves on the wall. So I didn't draw these veins and leaves with ink pen because I don't want too much details. Sometimes it's okay just to leave the details for the paintbrush. And adding another layer of more intense gray that I mix with blue and royal purple and a bit of green. But still leaving a little shine on the edge of the window frame to, uh, because that side of the frame is exposed to the daylight outside. And a little bit green for the view outside the window. I'm just keeping the view outside those window panels really light so they're not coming forward and compete with the mural details. A bit of leftover brown to paint the uh, my little dish and the residues in there. Some more warm brown colors. Just final polish now. Now I'm ready to paint the outfits of these people. This girl, she's wearing a green sweater, kind of matching the color of the murals. And I want to add a bit of blue into the green to paint the shade color and burn sienna for these girls' hair. Another layer containing less water for the shade of their hair. And um, believe it or not, I mix my own skin color with a very simple recipe. Just mix red and orange and dilute it with a lot of water to get the skin color for these people. And um, yeah, so most people these days, they like to wear gray or dark blue outfits. Just playing around with these blues and purplish grays. Yeah, that girl is wearing a pink 
sweater. So it's a really nice contrasting color with greens. A bit of darker shade around the stool. Yeah, even darker layer around the window frame there. Final polish, mostly grays. A, a nice leftover yellow wash. And a bit of gray around the edge of the door. Around the dome area outside. Brownish gray. Yeah, final polish out there. All right, so yeah, I think I'm gonna call it that now. I'm not gonna overwork on it, just to keep keep it really loose and simple and with a lot of energy of refreshment. And so thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. I'm happily tired. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I try to update this channel two to three times a week. In December, I'm updating more often because I have more time during the holidays. And here are some of the holiday lights around Montreal. Ooh, it's very cold. See you next time very soon, everyone. Happy holidays.